Hello crafters and welcome to season three of Peter P Craft Presents brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. Now I'm your host Michelle Brown, Creative Director over at From Picture to Page which is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafts community. Now Peter P Craft presents a whole heap of interviews and demonstrations from our talented retailers and some guest artists. So for all the details of season three as well as catching up on season one and season two head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au where you can see all the links, catch up on what's going on and of course get all the updates as we progress through the season. Now while you're over there, make sure you're on our mailing list so we can send you a summary at the end of each week which covers the replays that we've done and all the updates and everything else that's going on as well. Now whether you're watching here live on Facebook or watching a replay on Facebook or on YouTube, we would love to know that you're there. So pop in the comments as I can see that Wendy's done and Sandra and Tammy and Gwen and it's really exciting to have you all here with us this afternoon because today Peter P. Craft presents Peninsula Paper Craft Boutique. Hello Joe and Jen. Hello Hi. Michelle. Hi everyone. It's great to have you both there. How have you been going this week? Thank you. We've been good. We've been a little quiet, but uh, nice and busy on our online classes. So that's fun. Oh, excellent. So tell us about your online classes. So we run our online classes on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we also have a craft with us on a Friday night now, um, which is free to join. So hopefully we can have lots of crafters join us. Our classes are now just $10. Uh -huh. You get your instructions emailed to you. Uh, and then you can run through the class with us um, using what you've got at home or you can purchase things in store with what's listed on the instructions. Yeah. Oh, what a great idea to have classes that you can use with the stash you've got at home as well as perhaps adding a little bit to it. Yeah, it's always fun adding different bits and pieces from what you've got at home because um, you, you might see something, you go, oh, I really love what I've got or I use this stencil or that stamp or this die. Um, that just elevates yours and makes the project your own, which is always lots of fun. Yeah. yeah, excellent. And so tell us a bit more about that Crafts With Us session. How does that work? Do you want to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> um, we do, we've um, moved over to Zoom rather than um, what we were originally using under Google Meet. So Zoom seems to be a bit easier. So we moved over there. We put up a link on our, on our Facebook page and whoever wants to join us can just join in for... A couple of hours or half an hour or whatever just to you know have a chat and yeah. work on something that they're working on so good and I think there's yeah. nothing like in a way having a commitment to other people to really get your crafting out because at the moment either people seem to be completely flat out if they're still working or they've got heaps of time and they're almost not getting to crafting because they've got too much time so having a time where we're going to sit down and craft together is such a great idea yeah, and it's a good way to, you know, connect with other people and have a chat. And we had a lady from over the other side of the city. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's good. It gets us. Gets us all crafting together. Yeah. As much anywhere. as we've lost by not being able to be in person, I think we have been able to reach out to other people that we wouldn't normally get to see. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's good therapy too because you're relaxing. Um, you're not stressing about everything else that's going on and, and you, you're talking with like-minded people. So yeah. it's good therapy. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So what have you got to share with us today? We are going to work with alcohol inks today uh, and make some mixed media cards. I love working with alcohol inks and can tour creation have an awesome range. Excellent. Now, I do find alcohol inks a bit scary, so I'm looking forward to seeing how you can set us at ease today. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll let you get set up and then we'll jump into it. Fantastic. So I hope for you that those of you who have got alcohol inks or like you said, thinking of purchasing some, this is a great way to have a bit of a refresher. I know I've got some that I probably bought, oh, a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago even. So this is a chance for us to really have a play. And Jen says that we shouldn't be scared of them. So let's have um, a look at some of the different things we can do and get started. So Jen, I will hand over to you. Take it away. Thank you and hello everyone. Please do not be scared of alcohol inks. They are so much fun to use. But I, like Michelle, had purchased mine about 10 years ago when they first came onto the market. Uh, they ended up in the cupboard because I didn't know what to do with them. But now 
Um, I have so many different techniques and how to have fun and play. We're just going to enjoy ourselves today. So the first thing we're going to get started with is making our card bases. Okay, so we're just with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and any colour will do. I'm using the Ulysses Blue from Couture Creations. So our first mark, we're going to cut at six inches by 12 inches and that's going to be our first card. So you just fold that in half or you can score it at six inches if you prefer and pop that one aside. The next cut you're going to cut at is eight and a quarter. Fold that in half and that is your second card. And then what you have left is your third card. So you're making the most of your 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. So you've got three card bases there ready to go, okay? So as we're using alcohol inks, we're going to use Upro paper today for um, to work with. They're a lot easier. Uh, you can put uh, alcohol inks direct to cardstock if you're using a blending tool uh, or using glossy paper. But Upro paper gives you um, a bit more freedom to, to play with your alcohol inks. So we have white. Or we have the new black Yupo paper that's just arrived in store, which is beautiful, especially with the glitter alcohol inks. Yeah. So, Jen, tell us a bit about Yupo paper for those that haven't heard of it before. Sure. So, Yupo paper is a, a synthetic paper. It's plastic uh, rather than our paper cardstock that we're used to. It helps uh, the alcohol ink sit on top. So, the alcohol ink sitting on top of the Yupo will evaporate and the colour will be left behind. Whereas if we were to use a porous surface like a, a standard cardstock, the alcohol ink will just go straight through. Um, so Yupo paper is on the pricier side of things, um, but definitely worth investing in because it's a lot of fun to work with. So for our cards, we're going to cut our Yupo paper at five and a half by five and a half. Yes. Going to cut it at three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And we're going to cut it at three and a half by two and three quarters. Okay, now don't throw off your leftovers because you're going to use those a bit and we're going to die cut um, some things out of that later. Okay, so our card bases. Our first technique that we're going to work on with our large piece of Yupo is with the alcohol ink blower. So this one's the Couture Creations ink blower. They're $10 and available on our online store. I'm going to have a play with a few colours today. So I have the amethyst, the cobalt and the fuchsia glitter alcohol inks and then I've got a mermaid, just a normal alcohol ink. I love, it's my favourite colour so I had to use it. All right. So with the glitter alcohol inks, and apologies for the noise, but we do need to shake that up to get the glitter running through all through the alcohol inside the bottle. But you're going to add it onto directly onto your Yupo. So give a decent amount. Don't be so don't be too afraid of it. Grab your ink blower and then just blow it out. And as you rotate your your Yupo paper you can create these amazing shapes. And these you can die cut out or fussy cut out to create flowers or backgrounds, but today we're just going to work on a background. So that was the amethyst. I'm going to add some fuchsia. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up that glitter that's coming through there, but in person it is beautiful. So glittery. I'm 
And as you do, you're just going to cover your background with your alcohol inks and your ink blower. So this is probably one of the most basic techniques with your alcohol inks is just making a background. Lots and lots and lots of fun. So one of the other things that we use is blending solution. Now there are two things to use with alcohol inks. You've got blending solution and you've got straight isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so what I've learned is that isopropyl alcohol is like watercolor, uh, what like water is to watercolor paints. So it makes it lighter and makes it spread a lot further. Your blending solution, however, is what helps blend those colors together. It helps separate them. So I can show you just how they work a little differently. Just a few drops on there. Watch it move and create new colors. So if you can see that purple that's creating from the blue and the pink in the middle there. Whereas if we were to use the isopropyl alcohol, can you see that color lighting up, lightening up there? Hopefully you can see that on the camera. If you yeah, come a bit closer can, in. Yeah, just see the different colors. Just see it? Yeah. So it's probably one thing that's going to be easiest to see if you do it in person. Um, but I suppose if I do that, it might help. Can you see how that's moving? Yes. Yeah, we can see that and making that lighter. Yeah. So this is something that I could – I told some of my customers this week that I had to make sure I didn't do while I was on the screen because I will sit here and just watch the inks move on the Hippo paper. It is. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's like really it's, organic. It is. It's just making these cool as shapes and that's how they create the flowers that you've seen on people work with YouTube. Um, it's, it's just mucking around with it, adding more colours and layering the colours over the top using the isopropyl alcohol to make those colours spread out a lot further. But we have a lot of fun with alcohol inks in here. Yeah, and you can really see how on that UPO paper it just keeps sliding across the top. It's not soaking in. It does, yeah. So it, with when you're using the ink blower, it does help it move and it helps it dry a lot faster as it evaporates. Okay. How long does it take to dry? About a minute. Okay. <laughs> like you're in, if the more uh, blending solution or more isopropyl alcohol you use, the longer it takes to dry. Mm. But just as um, an ink, it does not take – sometimes it can take seconds. Oh, okay. I thought you'd be sitting it aside overnight before you wanted to play with it. Oh, no, 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 no. It's awesome. So it does not take long at all. And once it is dry, you can stamp over it. Oh. So. What I've learned is using a memento or a dye-based or a water-based ink mm -hmm. is the best to stamp over alcohol inks. If you go in there with a Stazon or an archival, especially on the UPO paper, because they're a solvent ink, they're going to react with the alcohol inks and they'll reactivate. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Does that make sense? Yeah. So dye-based ink, not solvent. Yes. However, I did learn from watching, just to confuse everyone, uh, watching Tim Holt's work with alcohol inks on YouTube, if you're using glossy cardstock, you can use archival ink once they're dry. Okay. The reason behind that is because it seeps into the glossy paper. Right. It's not sitting on the yeah. top. Okay. However, you do need to use a blending tool. So once you're happy with your background, you can set that aside uh, and you can come back to it and add more layers on it. If you want to add more colours to it, you just have fun, really play with it. But that's our first one. Okay, yeah. so I'll set that one aside. And... Yeah. and like you said, it's really just a matter of having a bit of a play, understanding how your background, your papers work, your mediums work. Exactly. Don't be afraid of things. So you could see how quick and easy it is to, oh, excuse my arm in the camera, 
<laughs> clean up this board. So this one is a new board that Couture Creations have just bought out oh. from Lucy Campany. So it's twenty dollars just for a beautiful glass mixed media mat. Um, it's great uh, to have in on your workspace to do your alcohol inks with, and you've got your little um, Teflon thing. No, it, well, no, it's just the glass mat, but oh, it's your okay. workspace area, so you've got um, space to do that. Okay, so with our little piece and our spare pieces, so we can die cut, we're going to play with the blending tool. All right, so Ooh, that's so one, pretty. It's very pretty. This one is a heart-shaped one from Couture Creations. So the reason they came out with the heart shapes is so you can use them and add them onto your projects oh. when you finish with them. So they're really, really fun. So to use your blending tool, shake up your alcohol inks and then just add some colours into it. So you can add these in stripes, you can add them in little dots, you can add as many or as little colours as you like really up to you but I just find the best thing you can do with what you've got at home is just to give them a go don't be afraid of using things all right so we're going to add some blending solution just straight across the middle okay so it's going to help our colors move and this is where you just have fun so you can stamp it You can swipe it. Ooh. Or you can smush it. Oh, there's nothing like smushing. <laughs> I love smushing. <laughs> smushing is fun. We can see how those do, they look completely different. It's the exact same colours, and I've still got heaps of ink on that you on the pad ready to use. So you can create different effects using it different ways, stamping, swiping, smushing, just playing around with it until you're happy. And it's just watching those little cells create, especially on the UPO, is so much fun. But this is the tool if you're going to use a glossy cardstock or straight cardstock. If you have alcohol ink on these tools, you can use alcohol ink on pretty much any surface. You will find that it will bleed through a little bit of your cardstock and it's not going to move like on your UPO paper. Once it's on there, it's on there. Um, but it just gives you that option to use more and more of what you've got at home. And if you're not happy with something, you just go in and keep adding over the top. But how quick and easy was that to create those backgrounds? That's great, Jen. So do you find if you, as you go back over the top, will it reactivate what's underneath? Uh, yes. Right. So if, if you dry it completely, you will be able to layer it. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you, especially if you use a blending solution, it will reactivate what's underneath. Yeah. When you're when you're painting with the alcohol inks, you do need to a uh, dry in between layers, uh, so you're not going to have that mix happen. But oh, they're so pretty. <laughs> I really could just stare at it all day, but we won't do that. <laughs> You want to see more things? Yes, we do. All right, so we're going to set those aside. And our last little technique is something really fun to do with alcohol inks is using texture paste. Oh, texture paste and alcohol inks. Yep. So we're going to put our stencil on. And this one is the polka dot stencil from Darkroom Door. And that's available on our website. We're just going to use some purple tape to stick this down so this is a low tack tape or you could use a bit of washi tape whatever you've got at home and we'll grab our texture paste so there's lots of ones different on the market the mo of using the Montmartre modeling paste that we have available in store it's nice and thick one 
just spread that over your UPO paper. That's just such the best feeling, isn't it, when you just get that right amount of texture paste on the stencil? It's pretty awesome. I usually go a bit heavy-handed and Joe tells me off. So. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. Mixed media is very new to me, so I'm trying. Yeah, we're always learning, and that's what the more we learn about our materials and our techniques, the, the better we can put them together. That is true. I love it. So much fun. All right. We lift that one up. Awesome. Love this stencil. And because, of course, it is live on TV and we don't want to see me dry this, you will need to set that aside to dry. And here's one I prepared earlier. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Now this, you can go direct to the UPO with your alcoholics. Just watch it create. As wow. it goes over that pattern on there. So does it sink into the texture paste or is it moving on top of it? So it does sink into it. So it just colours it, but it starts moving around the texture paste on that UPO paper that's not uh, covered in it. But it's just a lot of fun. And something that I noticed um, on one of the YouTube videos that I was watching was that they do use glossy cardstock. Okay. Or, no, actually, it was just normal standard cardstock. They gessoed over the top of it, dried it, then added texture paste, dried it, then went in with some alcoholic. So it's not going to move as much as if you're using the UPO paper, mm. but when you're wanting to create and keep your alcoholic in those particular sections, the gesso stops it seeping into your cardstock. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. So, yeah, if you don't have UPO or gloss paper, then a layer of gesso will certainly help. Yeah. It's not going to be perfect as the UPO, but it'll, it will do. It'll help. But just, oh, this glitter looks amazing. I can't quite see the glitter in it, unfortunately. It's really sad because it's so pretty. <laughs> I think it's once it's dry, you can see more of the reflection. Is that? Yeah, only in the heart, not so much in the background. Not in the background? No. Or is that better? Oh, yes, now we can see it a bit more. Oh, there it's got go. that real interference look. Yeah, so that's that's your glitter. Hang on, where's the cut? Oh, here we go. So this is the texture paste one I did as a sample. Check that out. Amazing. So it's beautiful. Um, the alcohol inks you can use with absolutely anything. You just give it a go. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to set that one aside, and we're going to go back to our our little piece here. And we're going to get the mixed media. -y. So this is where you just use pieces what you have at home. So I've got a little bit of bubble wrap. I've got some cardboard, rippled cardboard. So we just I kind think of you know you're a mixed media tragic when you start collecting bubble wrap and small pieces of corrugated cardboard. <laughs> I think that makes it official. <laughs> should see stuff I've been collecting at home my husband just looks at me going what yeah. and then when the kids bring stuff home they go look what we found you're like, excellent we'll use that <laughs> oh my daughter especially she loves it gets in right in there with me so the best thing about these and alcohol links you just go oh I know I can't see the bubble wrap I need to see it we're going to add some color so you add your alcohol inks directly on there and you can sit that onto your project. Oh. And same with your cardboard as well. So you just add a bit of colour direct on there. So it is the cardboard is going to seep in straight away and that's okay because that's just the background 
of what you're trying to use. But then you can load that up and then add a die cut, which I did in the sample. Ah. Good. And so do you find the alcohol ink takes longer to dry on the bubble wrap? Nope. Oh, okay. No, it only takes a minute or so and it's good to go. So if you're worried about it, like you can stick it on first yeah, and then add the alcohol ink uh, onto it because it's not really going to move much. It's just going to sit on where you yeah. put it. Yeah. As long as you use just alcohol ink, don't mix it with your blending solution or your isopropyl alcohol because yeah. that's what's going to extend the drying time. But once you have layered it up, you then stick it onto your, your base and you have card one. We have card two. And then you just add your sentiment onto that. And then we have card three. Ah. So and these all from one twelve by twelve sheet of cardstock. One twelve by twelve and one A4 piece of UPO paper and these extra pieces that we coloured in that's what we're going to die cut our or stamp our sentiments on to add to your cards so they work out beautifully and I'll pop the, the samples back so you can see what the finished I added uh, a piece of corrugated card underneath the happy birthday stamp I've stamped um, it's a bit hard to see in the light, but there's a stamp down the side here mm -hmm. over the top of the alcohol ink, just with the memento ink. And then I've adhered the heart felt uh, onto that one. And then more of the corrugated and the bubble wrap with your die cut over the top. So with not very many supplies at all, you've created three beautiful cards and it's so quick and easy to create beautiful backgrounds with the alcoholics. Yes. So, and what are you using to stick down your UPO? Are you using anything different? No. So double-sided tape, you've got your PVA glue in your bottle. Whatever you've got, is you don't need anything special or anything different to stick down the UPO to your cardstock. All right. So if there's any questions, that's our project. Okay. Well, let's turn you back around. No. Fantastic. So wasn't that some really great ideas? Because I think, again, you pose one of those things that you sort of hear about. It's a bit scary as well. But just to know that your your inks and, and, um, and alcohol inks will work a little bit differently on it. But, again, give it a try and then give yourselves plenty of time to um, just to play with all those different things. So excellent. So thanks, guys. That was so much fun. No worries. Excellent. Hopefully it's inspired you or you at home to get into the alcohol yeah, that you definitely. can stash away or grab some, especially some of these glitter ones. Yeah. So you, um, what brand were the alcohol inks and how many different colours do they come in? These are all Couture Creations. Mm -hmm. There's, um, I have to hold it up this way now, not my camera. <laughs> These ones, are, they're Couture Creations. So there's 11 new glitter alcohol in colours. Mm -hmm. They have many, many colours in their standard range. They have the alcohol ink pearls and we've got metallics coming very soon. Wow. So you can get, what, four different, so a plain, a glitter, a pearl. A pearl and metallics are coming. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> they keep just keep adding pro, um, adding to the line. So the black Yupo paper is brand new, but you've got the blending tools. They've just come out with a, a 30 mil blending solution. Mm -hmm. um, and I think isopropyl alcohol is on its way as well. Uh, and we'll be doing a, a class very soon. So keep an eye out on our Facebook page and on our website with Lucy Campanu. She's going to do some painting with us with alcohol. Oh, excellent. Now, Wendy's just asking how much are the inks and the mat and the blending solutions? So the mat is $20. The, alcohol, the standard alcohol inks are $5.99 each. The glitter alcohol inks are $6.99 each. And the blending solution is... Eleven ninety nine, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. um, for the tall one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I'm not sure how much the little That's okay. Is. We'll make sure we link to it on the website so everyone yes, can find it. It is on the website. <laughs> Apologies for that, Wendy. No, that's okay. And and what about the blending tool? Does it come in any other um, sizes or shapes other than heart? 
It doesn't. It's just the it's heart. The heart. So it comes amazing. in a pack with uh, some felt, yep. um, extra felts in there as well. Um, we've got a few in, left in stock. Um, That's just pretty to have on your desk, even if you're not going to use it. Use it as a paperweight. I know. I think that's kind of why they did it and because we've also got, um, you know, the blending brushes that have become very popular. Mm -hmm. They came out with a heart-shaped blending brush. Oh. It's very cute. <laughs> so, yeah, we all love pretty things on our craft desk. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> it comes in this little stand. I know. It's just amazing. I, I love how these companies just think of all those little details as well because you don't want to sit it on anything, but to have a little holder is just such a great touch. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Excellent. And so what classes have you got coming up? So this week we have our Fancy Fold or Fun Fold card on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We've got a mixed media card coming up on Wednesday. And Thursday we're doing some gel printing in our learn and play. We're going to work on image transfers. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good luck with that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be fun. And then Joe has... You've mixed got mixed media. Mixed media. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's on doing Saturday. a flower box on yeah. Saturday. It's beautiful. Oh, lovely. Excellent. And you mentioned was that play and learn? What's that session about? The learn and play. Learn and play. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Each Thursday we do a learn and play and we focus in on something different. So this week we did a whole lot of stamping techniques. Mm -hmm. Next week we'll be doing gel printing. Uh, and working on the transfers. So we'll go through a number of different techniques and then we're just going to play and have lots of fun with our gel prints. And then the following week we're actually doing um, a, a learn and play on how to use up your beautiful used baby wipes. Ah, excellent. <laughs> like I said, you know you're a tragic when you're keeping all of those bits and pieces to use up. Yep, it's happened. <laughs> Now, we know for some people doing online classes can be a little bit overwhelming or scary. How have you found your um, crafters adapting? They've done really well. They've stuck by us. So all of our regulars are doing their normal classes, sometimes up to three a week. Mm -hmm. um, they're joining in. So they've got used to it because, and it was a bit weird and odd and different mm -hmm. uh, when we first started. But what they found is that being at home with your in your craft space has really just made them excited about creating the projects because they've, they've got so much more available to them mm -hmm. than just what we've got in store. So, yeah, it, it is weird and it's strange, but if you do have an – a tablet or a computer, it works a little bit better because you've got a bigger screen to look yeah. at. Okay, yep. Um, but a lot of our customers do it just on their phone yeah. and it works quite well. So. Excellent. So if someone wanted to sign up for the first time, what's the steps that they need to go through? So heading on to our website and uh, joining in uh, to our class. So sign up to our class. It'll cost, um, put $10 and it'll go through on our website. Mm -hmm. Once you've joined up to a class, you'll have instructions emailed out to you and the link to the Zoom meeting will be sent out as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's instructions for the class as well as how to get into the online class. Yes, yeah, yeah it's very easy. Once you've done it the first time, it's it's very easy um, to, to get on there. We're using Zoom now, mm -hmm. uh, which seems to be a lot more stable. <laughs> yeah. And like people said, sometimes the first time takes a little bit longer because you sort of your computer's got to find all the bits. But once you're on, it always remembers it and it makes it so much easier. It does, yeah, yeah. It, it's just a great way of being able to connect with with fellow crafters and to learn some new techniques and have a bit of fun and just make the most out of what you've got at home. Because we're all feeling a bit sad and frustrated. And <laughs> irritated with the situation that's going on so we just need to get pretty things out and and have fun together yeah, we're going to craft through crisis most definitely <laughs> now if there's anyone that's a bit worried about being on video are they able to like turn their video off and still participate yeah absolutely they don't need to be on video at all they can just have us they don't need to talk to us if they don't want to as well um just listen in yeah just listen in and we're always there to answer questions which you can type in that you don't have to to speak them out if you don't want to yep. if you feel a bit silly you can do a private message mm -hmm. but there is no silly in craft there is no mistakes in craft mm -hmm. it's just what our, our 
was that words for this year is unique creations. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Unique creations. That's definitely what we're doing, I think. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> excellent. Well, Jen and Joe, thank you so much for joining us today here at P2P Craft Presents. No worries. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Michelle. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic. So I hope you learned something there and I really am so excited to have Jen and Joe along because their spirit and is just what we need in crafting at the moment. You know, there are no mistakes. There's so many different ways that you can get involved, that you can learn. And $10 an online class is just an easy way to jump in. And like we said, if you don't set aside time to craft, then we don't. Somehow we get from Monday to Friday in a blink of an eye. And if we don't set aside that time, say, okay, we're going to go out, use up what we've got, have a bit of a plate, then we just don't get to it. And we're just not going to learn anything. So I think it's a great offering. So I hope you've had some fun playing with alcohol inks, learning a little bit about UPO and like we said over on the from picture to page website we'll make sure we've got all the links to the alcohol links to the um the platforms and all to the blending solution and the blending tools as well so thank you so much for joining us here today as p2p craft presents peninsula paper crafts i hope you um have had an interesting day and like we said to catch up on the replays head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au are all the details and while you're here in facebook and youtube please give us a like a thumbs up and of course share us with your crafting friends because that's the way that we can all spread the crafting as we're crafting at these challenging times so this is michelle brown signing off we hope you have a crafty day.